So um, just uh, the ground rules that Moyo and I have agreed upon. Um, this will be uh, a conversation between him and me, but I actually think that he is quite prepared to tell you everything that we want to know. <laughs> um, so we'll, uh, I may pose some questions during the course of his presentation, um, and we will have a Q&A at the end. So please hold on to your questions and you can put them in the group chat. Um, and so we'll look at the questions at the end. Okay, Dr. Mutamba, please proceed. Uh, let us know about you and um, your project, <coughs> the, the uh, Trust Ubuntu Learning Village and how it started and everything. Thanks. Thank you. I'm just going to share my screen uh, I have uh, some images that I would like to share with you. Uh, there we go. Um, are you able to see it? Yeah, it. okay, great. Um, so our organization or our um, community is called Ubuntu Learning Village. Um, and I say Ubuntu Learning Village is an experiment in creating a space of belonging. At a local level, uh, what we do is we uh, promote uh, cultural, social, and economic well being. And at a global level, we are a space where people from around the world can come and share with us cultural knowledges and ideas that can make the world a better place for everyone. So we have a local, um, we, we do local work and we also do global work. Would you like me to say more or ask another oh, oh, question? Oh yeah, oh, please, okay. please go on. What, when, when did you start it? Um, when did you come to Toronto and uh, it, was that when you decided that you wanted to start the project back home? Okay, um, so the proper building of the learning space itself uh, in Serima began in 2012. But I would like to go a little, um, to go back a little bit, just to give you context. How do I? Okay. Ah, so. Sorry. How do I play this? Okay. I just want to play you a video. Today is my birthday. And I want to play you a video that uh, my, my community at, at the center sent me. Uh, and then I can I can I, I can talk after. <laughs> okay. I can respond to your question. Okay. So the image that you see is some of the people that actually live at the village, uh, and <laughs> because it's my birthday, they sent this really playful, fun video, and I would like you to see it, and then I can I can talk up I can talk about where Ubuntu came from. And um, and where we are trying to go. my 
people at, uh, at the Learning Village. And the image that you see now is the image of my birth mother. Uh, she died in 1994 uh, from uh, complications to HIV and AIDS. Um, so my mom was a single mom and we lived for a while in Bechnaf Bridge. And we kept on moving around in Bechnaf Bridge because we didn't have our own land or didn't have enough money uh, to, to maintain housing. Um, but I have memories of this place that I grew up, grew, uh, that I spent a, a while in. Uh, it was a compound that was owned by the Mukokondo family. And in that compound, there were about 30 families that lived there, most of them single mothers, most of them sex workers, who worked together, uh, cared for each other, defended each other, supported each other. Uh, and it was wonderful to grow up there. This is where I began uh, to actually learn uh, some of the songs, uh, uh, um, the Shona songs, uh, spiritual songs. Uh, that's where I attended my first ceremony. Um, that's where I also learned a lot of songs from the liberation struggle. My mom uh, was a, a, an informer during the liberation struggle and she carried a lot of songs. She was a community organizer um, and she participated in the liberation struggle. Um, so I feel strongly that the inspiration to begin or to start this community came from her and came from my experiences of watching vulnerable people at um, the Mkokondo compound look after each other and create their own power uh, in that space. So I said earlier on that Ubuntu proper began in 2012. Uh, however, I had carried a question uh, for, for a long time. And the question goes, I wrote it down, let me see. <laughs> the question is, what learning does the world need now for everyone in it to belong? What learning does the world need now for everyone in it to belong? I've been obsessed about, uh, about this idea of belonging, uh, mostly because of the way I grew up being marginalized and you know, being a child of a sex worker you know, with an absent dad and being kicked out of school because I didn't have money, living on the streets. Um, so the question of belonging has always been, uh, um, been something that I've, I want to explore. Um, and, and so with that question, came more questions. Um, so what does the world actually need for everyone in it to belong? The first thing that came to mind, that comes to mind when I ask that question is really connection. And I am inspired by Ubuntu philosophy uh, because Ubuntu philosophy really is, is, is centered and is grounded in this uh, understanding that we are not individuals in as much as, as we claim to be. We are not individuals. Um, our identity actually comes from us being part of a community. Rhinos cannot exist without the community and community here is in, in an expansive sense. So people, the land, uh, the trees, the animals, the air and everything that actually allows us to to live, so we are dependent on each other, right? Um, and, and so that inspired me, that has always inspired me. So I thought, how would I create or continue to explore this learning um, around connection and creating spaces of belonging? Um, so I thought, well, maybe it makes sense to create actually a physical space where we can experiment with doing that and then invite the whole world to experiment with us. So, 
So I quit my social work job. I worked as a social worker uh, at an organization in Toronto and decided to, decided to do a PhD. And this might not make sense to you, but going back to do a PhD actually allowed me the space and time to start building the, the, the learning center. Uh, because I, I, if I was going to work, for example, nine to five in a stressful social work, social work position, I wouldn't have the energy, right? Uh, and I also made my PhD about place-based social movements uh, like Ubuntu, like uh, Kufunda Learning Village, so that I could, the building of the village itself could be my, my uh, what do they call it in, a, in, a, in academia, I'm forgetting, my, my, my actual project. Now I wrote a thesis, it's, it's, it's out there. Uh, but I'm more proud of the community of Ubuntu Learning Village, <laughs> not the thesis itself, <laughs> because it's sitting somewhere, and I don't think, you know, I don't think more than my committee has read it. Uh, uh, but some of you have actually gone to the Learning Village, right? I, I, I know I can see Je uh, Jennifer Kaika is there, I can see uh, Mark Keller is there, um, uh, and others. So it's, 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 I, I have more, uh, I feel more excited about talking about that, 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 that space. Mm -hmm. So we started building, so I bought land in 2011. And then when I started my PhD in 2012, uh, that's when we actually started putting physical structures. And I literally just used my scholarship money to, 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 to start building on it and to start, you know, creating uh, the uh, building homes um, um, and other amenities that 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 we uh, that we need, um, and then you know with time we got our our trust status in 2015. Um, then we started putting more work into 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 inviting Ambira teachers to teach the people that are at the village and other people from around that are interested in learning Bira. Um, and that is going really, really well. So this is a little bit of the history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, I wanted to backtrack a little bit about the land, because I got interested. You had said in a previous show that um, the village where you came from it was drought prone and so on, and you realized you needed different land. And I wondered if you could put that in context of yeah. struggles over the land in Zimbabwe's liberation fight yeah. and 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 was this land you had you ended up having to buy buy it for cash right um was that land that was once designated by the colonialists as uh what they call it African purchase territory right right so Ubuntu Learning Village is located in uh in um Chief Serima's land um, and that is between Chivu and Gudu for people that have gone to Zimbabwe. It's in Mashingo province. It's very close to Great Zimbabwe. Now, I was born in uh, a village called Chepiri. Actually, no, it's called Madege. So my, my, my maternal grandfather's uh, side of the family, they are the chiefs. They are the, uh, the people of the cow, cow leg clan. Uh, they are the ones that, that, that rule the area. And that's where I was born. And the area is, is mountainous. There isn't actually a lot of land. And what my mom tells me and others tell me that, in fact, the, during the liberation struggle, there was an agreement that was made by the incoming uh, ZANPF government and the people of the area that when they got independence, they'll be moved because that area, uh, the land is not very good. And also, um, because of climate change, the rains come very like, like every two years, uh, sometimes after three years. So you can't really grow enough food. And with, I was thinking, well, if we are going to have this learning space, it makes sense to have our own food. It makes sense to be somewhere where there is enough water. Um, so Serima, the area that we ended up, I ended up buying land uh, in, there is a river, River Pokoteke, and then there is uh, the land is is not 
great, great, but we can, we can, we can fertilize it. We, we use organic fertilizer from our cows and, and, um, and, uh, and leaves, tree leaves and stuff and grass. Um, and the rains there actually, they are regular enough that we can grow some things using, uh, some crops using natural rain. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the, the story around the land there. Mm -hmm. And everything we see here, um, you've, you've built from scratch. And so the only thing that was there when we got the land is the, what you can, what you see, the, the, the kitchen there with uh, the W patterns. And then everything else we built from scratch. And um, who, you said your, your mother is deceased. Who, um, who did you invite or did you have a group of people that you had in mind to, to settle there? Where did the people come from? So when we started, it was my dad, um, myself, and my brother, and uh, a nephew who unfortunately passed away. She was uh, hit by a car uh, recently. Uh, like last last year, and then she ended up dying from the from the wounds. Um, and then, um, I, because I'm here in Canada, so my 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 brother invited some of uh, some of his friends, um, and you know, people people come and go, uh, but there are some people that have been there, yeah, since 2014. And some people have already started families there. Yeah, but these are like some close relatives, um, uh, friends of friends, uh, strangers <laughs> that, um, uh, so for example, we have uh, a, a new person that I really love. Uh, his name is Pius. Uh, what happened was for him, he was in high school and he had a relationship and um, um, they got pregnant and then he didn't really have anywhere to go. So he heard about us and he was like, can I come? And the people there are like, okay, you can come. And so he came and stayed there with his partner. And now they have a beautiful child mm -hmm. and um, he's staying there. So we are kind of like, we are, we are, we are open to whoever uh, um, needs space uh, and also the other relationships that we, we have with, with, with others. Uh, we, we draw from those as well. Mm -hmm. So is, do you have a, um, a community council of some sort of uh, um, makes yes. decisions? Yes, yes, yes. So we have uh, everyone there is part of the council. Uh, we, 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 people on the ground meet every week in a, in a dare. And that's where all the decisions uh, about the village, the direction of the village, uh, who is invited, who is, who is not, uh, the work that they do. Uh, all those decisions are made there. Mm -hmm. So, so um, what about uh, your emphasis on music and uh, do you have a, an objective to um, help support musicians and help promote the musical and dance traditions? Yes, yes. So, so we um, are technically a cultural center. And our focus in that the culture piece is really around uh, um, Ambira music, uh, you know, drumming, dancing. Um, and the intention is to have a, a space in a rural community um, where people can reconnect to their, to their, to, to, to the Ambira traditions and, 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 and ceremonies. Um, and also, because I am here in North America, um, it becomes a, a way for, 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 for experienced Mbira players and Mbira teachers to also connect with the outside world. Um, I hustle, I write grants. <laughs> so I've written, I re I've written a few grants where most of the money goes to the, uh, to the, to the, to the Mbira teachers and Mbira makers, Tirikoti, uh, John Wazara, they've benefited from those grants. 
um, Alois Mtiniri, they've benefited from those grants. And now we are, we are kind of moving towards applying for local grants. Uh, I just learned recently that the National Arts Council has grants for artists. So we just submitted another grant and the grant is um, the way we, 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 we structured it is that there is a lot of mentorship happening so that we have Mbira teachers, we have cultural teachers, we have marimba teachers, we have dance teachers that can benefit from, from, from that grant. And then they can also go to schools and perform and teach in schools. Um, and that also um, allows them to have access to, to funds. Right. So, um, you know, uh, it's because of you, you and your connection that we've had Alois Mutiniri come to the U.S. and come to Zimfest. Mm -hmm. um, is he, does he, does he stays somewhere else, doesn't he? He just comes to teach? Yeah, so he, um, he actually lived at the village for almost uh, three and a half years. Oh, all right. Uh, but he would go, he would go, he would go to Mondoro and he would go do um, um, uh, Mapira uh, around uh, he would go do uh, shows in Harare, uh, but now he, you know, he he started another cultural center in in, in Mondoro, uh, so that's really really beautiful. Uh, that he he's um, he's he's doing he's he's doing that 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 work there now, um, right. yeah. And Joyce Warikanwa is does she staying there? Or yeah, she stays else? at the village. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's Joyce right there, and that's Pius and his baby. Mm -hmm. So during this time, uh, during the pandemic, I don't know, um, you probably came back really before um, things got serious in Zimbabwe. Do you, are, how is, how are people in the village dealing with it? And do you have any programs uh, relating to the pandemic? Yeah. Um, people in the villages are struggling. <laughs> yeah. They are struggling because what, what happened is that um, um, what happened is that the government All right, <laughs> I have to be careful here. So what, what happened is that the government, because of COVID and, and you know, to not, uh, to, not uh, uh, to protect people from, from, from getting the disease, they instituted a lockdown. Now, it was a lockdown that was put in place without resources to support people, right? Uh, and so people in cities are struggling. People in, in, in villages are struggling. And, and in, our, in the specific area of Serima, because, of not, uh, uh, because we had a little bit of a drought this year, people will have said something, but I don't think it's, go, it's, it's gonna last long. Um, uh, people cannot go out to look for, for, for food in other areas because uh, part of the lockdown is that you can't, you can't travel anywhere. Uh, so people are really, really struggling. And what I've been doing uh, for the last, I think I started last week, was to figure out a way of, of um, getting groceries to, to some, of the, some of the kids that come to the school, uh, because I just have to start small. And, and so I connected with a trusted friend of mine who is already delivering groceries in Harare. Uh, he has access to this, to, to, to a truck that goes to South Africa and buys him. So he said he can get the stuff for us uh, at wholesale pr price, and then he won't charge uh, us for transportation. And then uh, we also have a small school bus, so we can actually take the, 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 the groceries and, and, and deliver them to different homes. And, um, uh, and also, I've developed relationships with, with the MP, with the chief, uh, with the with the counselor and they're very supportive of the idea because one of the things that you know when you're working in this in community work in Zimbabwe is really the issue of politicization of, of the work I'm not a politician um, I'm not into uh, 
uh, you know, party politics. Uh, I care more about, about community and the people of, on, on the ground. Um, but there's always a chance that if someone says, oh, you know, this is, this is an MDC uh, supporter, uh, then, you know, I have put the whole community at risk. <clears throat> because even if the government is saying, you know, like, uh, we don't tolerate violence, I mean, there are people who make decision on the, decisions on the ground to, to make it out anyways. Um, so, so I've built all these relationships that allow us to, to, to do the work that we need to do in the community. Um, so at this point, I'm like, so my friend just sent me a quote and said, you know, to be able to uh, send a family like four kgs of sugar, um, uh, like four liters of cooking oil, uh, five, five kgs of, of, of beans, uh, a bar of, of soap, um, for like 28 kids, it will cost around 1000 US. Mm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm just hustling for the money right, right now so that right. that can happen. Right. Yeah. But we're also, um, I'm supervising a student who is doing a uh, MSW at the University of Toronto and we are developing like educational uh, material, uh, around COVID and, and, and around general health, around women's health. Um, that will be, will be shared with, with people in the community as well at this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I think um, this year you were back there uh, working on building the school. You yes. You want to talk about the school a little bit? Yeah. So I, you know, I, I, when I shared the story about my mom, I said one of the things that I struggled with was going to school. Uh, because after the economic adjust uh, economic structural adjustment programs (ESAPs), I don't know if people know them. Uh, you know, health ceased to be public. Um, people had to have to pay to go to hospitals or or, or clinics. Uh, education as well ceased to be public, in in the way that we understand public, which is should be free. Um, so people have to pay to go to school from grade from kindergarten. Uh, to all highest levels of education. So one of the things that really I struggled with as a young person was finding money to go to school. So I was kicked out of school a lot. Uh, and so when I finished grade five, I started grade six, I got kicked out and I gave up. I was like, I'm not gonna be embarrassed because every time that you get kicked out, you come back, some uh, kids laugh at you. Uh, I, I got bullied a lot. Uh, so I decided to leave and then things at home were not working well because my mom was sick uh, and I, you know, I, I, I just, it, it was, it was, it was difficult. So I decided to go and live on the streets for a while. I lived on the streets on and off for about two years. Um, and then I went back to school uh, and I still owe, <laughs> I still owe school fees <laughs> from that time, uh, my primary school because <laughs> I didn't have the money. But so it was very difficult. Uh, and I, was, I happened to be, you know, to be one of the quote-unquote bright students in the British education system. So the idea of, a, of this school, had, you know, was also like an idea that I've had for a long time. Like, what if education was free? What if we can create free education? And then over time, as I analyzed the education system and realized that it also was not accessible in many other ways, right? So it's intended for one type of learner. Uh, how about creating a system that is free in terms of that students or families don't have to pay money, uh, that is free in terms of the ways that, that, that uh, learners learn, uh, that is kind and caring uh, because you know, we adopted the British system and it's very harsh and, 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 and there's a lot of uh, uh, physical uh, violence uh, meted on students by, by, by teachers and, and administrators. Um, so how about creating a space where actually kids can uh, be who they can be and can feel a sense of belonging and they can learn to be their most brilliant selves in the ways that their brilliance um, manifests. 
So around 2018, we started meeting with the community and it happened like many rural places in Zimbabwe, schools are like six kilometers away. I remember going to secondary school and walking 10 kilometers, 22 kilometers a day to go to, 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 to high school, right? Uh, to go to secondary school. Um, so, so the community said, okay, we would actually love, love the idea because we have these little kids that are being asked to walk seven, uh, eight kilometers to a school. Um, and so it would be like, the closest is six kilometers, so it would be 12 kilometers a day. How can a four year old be asked to walk 12 kilometers a day so that they can go to a place where they don't actually get treated well mm -hmm. and they don't learn in the way that uh, allows them to thrive in the world? That is not okay. So we came together as a community, we started having conversations, we had agreements, and I said, you know, I will go out in the world and ask for, for funds for the things that you can't create as a community, but for everything that you can create, for the bricks, uh, for like, you know, some of the building, uh, for the sand that is needed, uh, for cooking food for the, for the kids, you as a community will provide that. And I guarantee that you will not have to pay for your ch children to, 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 to come to school and will get the best teachers possible that care and that are loving so that your, ch your children will have a fantastic exp uh, learning experience. Are your teachers then um, hired by the government? Or are you no, totally no, private? we hired them locally. They are local people okay. from the community. Mm -hmm. So we did interviews and one of the one of the questions would ask is like you know what's your view of a child right just to get an understanding of you know people what they think about children and and you get a lot right some would say oh you know like they need to be uh, to be uh to be controlled because they can be rowdy and all that stuff we're like uh -uh, no <laughs> <laughs> you're in the wrong place <laughs> right yeah yeah you are you able to provide them accommodation as well as a wage um yeah yeah i mean it's not a lot of money they are paid better than 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 teachers in the in the in the in the public school system um but mm -hmm. our hope is that over time we'll be able to to have enough resources to to to, to pay them even even better great great what what is the um uh stage of, that construction is in how many classrooms do you have and students do you have at this point yeah so at this point we have 28 students and we have one class that is almost almost complete it just need window pens and then we have another class that right now i'm actually gonna send some of the money that some of you donated on on on, on facebook uh, today so that they can finish putting the wall on the second classroom and the way we've we've done it because i don't have a lot of money we don't have a lot of money we have kind of stuck at the building of the school so every year we we um we aim to build one classroom so that the kids who are in grade one go into a classroom for grade two and then the grade one class becomes available for those who are coming in mm -hmm. and so every year we are we're we are, we are aiming to build one classroom great so the older yeah. ones right now still are going away somewhere yeah 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 so like the older ones are still are still going away somewhere mm -hmm. um and and it, it breaks my heart but given you know the, the resources that we have um that's that's the best that we can do at this moment in time i'm trying to hustle as much as i can um right well but it's, that it's, me, brings me to the question is um what can we do to help what can north americans and i don't mm -hmm. know there may be some other uh people here what can we do to help mm -hmm. um i want to start by saying thank you for to 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 folks that have donated. Um, and thank you to uh, Inumbira group, uh, Marimba groups that have donated. So I, um, Marimba boys, uh, folks, uh, Heather still really uh, helped us at a time when <laughs> we ran out of money and we didn't have money to pay our teachers. And they, came, they, they, they mm. did a fundraiser. Uh, and actually, yeah, they did a fundraiser with the, the, the students, the Miramar group, a Mariba group student 
uh, the Marimba, the student of the Marimba group. Um, they, they denoted some money. Um, <clears throat> so what, we're, what, we are, what would help us on the ground is really money to buy the things that we can't make at, at, uh, in, the, in the community. Uh, and I have a fundraiser, it's my birthday. I am like, I don't really celebrate my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's on this Facebook page. Um, yeah, also yeah, so my these... Facebook page, I am, I, am, I am fundraising through that. And people are, are really are, are donating and it's, it's, it's amazing. That's great. Um, and then we're also, you know, uh, beyond money, I, one of the things that I'm hoping for is, is to have people when this COVID things uh, end, to have people that can just go and learn with us and teach us. Like we are still kind of developing the Ubuntu, you know, education philosophy. Uh, and, 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 you know, we also want to learn from like people who have, who have uh, taught using the world of system. Um, uh, people who are just kind and 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 beautiful. <laughs> oh, you know, when I, I went I went to Zimbabwe in um, 1985 uh, and taught in two de two different government schools. Could somebody come who wants to to be with you and, yeah. and be a teacher there? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Totally. To do the totally the, totally the, uh, okay. TEP correct visa thing but yeah yeah, yeah. i mean we can we can we now we have the the uh, relationship with the with the national arts council and we can actually get like a cultural exchange um uh visa thing so uh, that, you're you are that, a registered trust yeah because we're a registered trust yeah yeah uh, um questions coming i've got a screen at the end of this talk i will share a screen that has uh, his uh, Moyo's contact information and uh, after today, after his birthday fundraiser is over, how you can um, connect with him to, to uh, donate money. Somebody's asking right now too, can we donate on a monthly basis? I don't know if you've got anything like that. That's a good question. We just set up a page on, uh, on giving way that allows people to donate on a monthly basis. Um, so I will, I will share that. Uh, with you, and I'll also put it on Facebook. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, okay, what, uh, anything else about the village, the school? What would you like uh, the Zinfest and broader community to know that we haven't talked about? <laughs> I want to say thank you. I think, I think, uh, I cannot um, thank you enough for for creating a community that care, right? I think I think they are um, like from an Ubuntu perspective, from a Chivano perspective, right? We're all relations here, and the ideas that we have um, are all ideas that we are we have to uh, around difference and stuff, right? Like I I think of people as you know, we are all humans. We are the same in the sense that we're all humans. Uh, we are also different in the way that our human expression manifests, right? So we are, we are the same because we're humans and then we are different in our human expressions. And now, you know, in terms of uh, things like colonialism and all this stuff, like that difference has been taken to you know, to, 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 to divide people and, and for the sake of, of power and, and plunder. Um, and that is something to talk about. Um, at the same time, I think from, from, from an Ubuntu perspective, we're all one people. And the kind of globalization that we're trying to create is a globalization that brings us together, right? Uh, so I want to, be, to, to thank uh, folks at Zimfest um, and I want to thank the, the, the North American community for, the, for continuing to support. I think last year we raised about 7,000 and a lot of it came from the, from, from the, from the North American um, Bira Marimba Zimbabwe music community. And I can see the same thing happening this year. And not only that, I mean, it's not only just about money, but really deep, uh, long lasting friendships 
um, to have people come visit the village. Uh, Dr. Jennifer Kaika was there um, and we continue to connect and dream about, you know, so there's this Sekuru Muradzikwa, what do we do, right? Uh, and and, and that, is, that is very, very beautiful. And I value that uh, um, a lot. Yeah. I think we value the connection and being able to help. Um, Moyo and I talked about how it would be relevant um, to talk about the Google Doodle and um, the reactions that there have been to that. So, and uh, we have somebody who might want to uh, jump in here, but let's get uh, Moyo's perspective on that. <laughs> Let me drink some tea. <laughs> I think I think most people are aware of of, of cultural appropriation, right? Uh, and and the way I have defined cultural appropriation is um, when someone who is in a position of power takes from uh, oppressed people you know, culture, their, their cultural, whether they're artifacts, whether it is music, whether it is art, um, and benefit from them, right? Um, and to, to me, the issue, the issue is, you know, someone who is, who is in the position of power, uh, to me is people taking for their own benefit and and also the absence of relationships right and um being coming from an ubuntu perspective yeah we share and that's what that's what we do we connect through our expressions of human difference right that's what we do we complement each other in that way um and if that is happening with relationships, with support for each other, I will not characterize that as cultural appropriation. I think uh, culture is there to connect people. Now, in terms of the in terms of the uh, Google Doodle, I, I'm I'm not very. I do not have the full details to make any informed judgment. Um, the little bit that I know, and this is just me doing background work, is at, uh, in, you know connecting with people that whose 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 faces and whose voices that I hear in one of the videos. So like I talked to Tendai Gahamadze, uh, I talked to Tafaz Matamba, I talked to Sawira Biri, um, I talked with um, with uh, Joyce Warikandwa, I talked with uh, with uh, Matemai, and the thing that they are saying is they never got paid anything. Yeah. And I asked, you know, I asked separately just to make sure and the consistent message, we never got paid anything. And that breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened with Google people. I don't know what happened with the, with the, with the, uh, with the producers. Uh, but this is, this is, this is not okay. <laughs> this is not okay. Um, and, you know, and like, as we learn from each other, um, we are also, I feel like we're also learning to, you know, give roles to Zimbabweans so that they can be, they can be leaders in their own culture and in, you know, in the, in the discourses around their own culture. Um, and sometimes it feels weird to not be trusted to, to, to represent your own culture. <laughs> yeah, it feels very funny. Um, and I think, you know, I think uh, one of the points that was raised in the, in the, in the uh, Google Doodle is around, you know, the production team. Um, so it's, it's, it's concerning to me. But again, I'm, I'm speaking from, you know, a position of not having the full details. Uh, what I'm talking about is, is me just checking in with my friends to say, okay, I saw your face there. Uh, you played there, you talked there. 
did you get anything from it? And the answer from everybody was no. I was very sorry to hear that. Um, so Jacqueline and Tendai are on here, but Tendai has a session coming up. So I don't know whether Tendai, you want to say anything or invite people to that other session that you have. Um, hi, everybody. There he is. Um, I've got lots of things to say about that whole thing. <laughs> But um, I'll be starting a talk at six o'clock. But just going straight to what Tamba is saying. What happened in Zimbabwe and who got paid what, who didn't get paid what, that I don't know. So I can't give an honest answer to that. I know the people who appeared in, all in, those vi in that video, what they were paid, I don't know. So that's the long and short of it. The production here, that's a different story, okay? So, <clears throat> I mean, we can follow up that, and I know a lot of the people who are involved in that whole production, and um, I think it would be nice to address that part. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think we can work out something. Uh, if, if it's true that no one has paid anything, I think we, we, we've got channels for that to try and you know, make things right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Yep. Uh, that's, that's it. I'm just going to leave this forum so that I can get my other chat. Right. So if you can Thank join you. after this, please join. Thanks, today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, we have time for some questions. Uh, where is Tendai's talk? Can somebody post it here? Um, Savannah Madamumbe. On Sav Facebook? Savannah Madamumbe on Facebook. She's asking that. Uh, let's see. Can you type it here? Yeah, Savannah Madamumbe. Jen Jennifer just typed it up. So. Well, I got, if I spelled it right. Um, so, you know, it's, it's an open discussion, you know. People say whatever they want, but I'm going to say a few things there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Ta Thanks, Tendai. There we go. Well, meanwhile, um, I really didn't want to distract from um, Moyo's project. Do we have any other questions? This is officially the Q&A session. So I'll ask a question, Moyo. Like, I would, I would love to hear you talk about the philosophy of Ubuntu and changing mindsets. And like, to you, how does this relate to you know that ongoing struggle for independence in Zimbabwe? You know, we have a situation in Zimbabwe where Indira is still denigrated often. Christians reject it. Um, the more educated you are, the less likely you are to play Indira. So in a way, you're helpfully breaking that trend for us, right? Mm -hmm. How, how do you see Ubuntu as like participating in this like shift of mindset and trying to get people to like change their their thinking in addition to addressing their actual living conditions? You know what? How how do you want people's thinking to change? Okay. Uh, thank you, thank you for that question. Um, one thing that I always think about is what does it take for change to happen? Um, it takes changing mindsets. It takes um, building skill sets, and it also takes uh, building structures, right? And I see the work of Ubuntu as a physical uh, space, um, as a space where people can actually come and learn about culture. I'm also seeing it going moving forward as a as 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 a space that. Um, that where people can be trained to go in different spaces to share, right? So we are looking at really the education piece for the children that are coming to the, uh, to the Ubuntu Free School. It's very much cultural. It's very much uh, discussions on our own culture. 
um, and what does that mean for our lives. Um, we're also, uh, some of the, the grant that we're actually applying for is, we applied for, is really to do a theater. So Mbira, Marimba, a theater in schools and in public spaces, uh, challenging some of the mindsets that we have, some of the you know, colonial thinking that, that continue to exist. Um, and um, so I see, I see Ubuntu as like a space where knowledge is being produced that counters the, 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 the continuing uh, colonial ideas that, that, that are in Zimbabwe. Um, and and we, are very, we are very bold. <laughs> we are very bold and, and, and the way, the way, the way we, we, we talk about our space is, I, I don't know if, I, I'm not sure what conversations you had with people there, but we are very bold in, in, in saying, this is who we are, right? This is who we are. This is what our culture is about. We are going to do ceremonies. We are going to encourage people to do ceremonies. Um, uh, we are not just going to like teach people to play mbira because mbira is an instrument. Uh -uh. We are going to make connections to uh, our spiritual uh, uh, cosmology. Uh, we are going to make connections to our relationship to the land. Um, uh, we are going to make relationship to, you know, all the other rights that are being are being lost. Um, um, so, so we 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 exist as a bold space for all those things uh, to happen, um, and we're also we're also uh, we also like really love to debate people. <laughs> so when we like go to public spaces and start talking about these things, the people challenge us and stuff. And oh, you're all evil. I remember one of the things that came up uh, when we started the school, when other kids started coming to the school. People said, some people who are Christian in the community saying, oh, you're going to a Satanist school, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I did was go into the communities, right? And have meetings with people and explain the, 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 the cultural side of things, but also really uh, include the conversation on decolonization. What actually does it look like? It's economic, it's spiritual, uh, um, uh, it's relational. Uh, so all those things um, hopefully will shift how people think and how people relate to our to our culture and traditions. Great. I, I think uh, Rujeko had a question. She here. You're muted. Hi, it's it's me. <laughs> Hi, Moyo. Thank What's you so much. Like? for your talk. Um, <clears throat> I was wondering, you, I guess you mentioned Kufunda. I was thinking what, if you had a model that you followed or did you feel like, was that a model that you felt like you could follow? Or did you feel like you created, <clears throat> you created this from, from scratch. Ah, okay, okay. No, I did not. <laughs> I would lie. So what happened is that when I started, uh, I actually, I got connected in, to Kufunda in 2003. I am a Kufundi. Um, yeah. uh, and the people there are my friends. Uh, so actually, this is, this might, I don't know if Jennifer, you remember this, but in 2010, I did a fundraiser in Toronto that raised money for Tariro and Kufunda. I think it was 2010. Um, and and um, so Kufunda is like, those are my people and I've learned a lot from them. Uh, in fact, because we do, we, we just don't do cultural stuff. We do uh, also like facilitation of conversations, uh, trainings on like, you know, beekeeping, organic farming and all that stuff. Most of our people are trained at Kufunda. Um, so when I started doing uh, fundraising for like HIV and AIDS work, uh, and we built uh, a center in Mondoro for children uh, in Kwari village, it was through Kufunda and I raised the funds here in Canada. It was through Kufunda that, that did that. So I have, I'm very connected to Kufunda and they've inspired a lot of what, what, what we are doing. Um, 
we ha however take a very cultural angle and that's the that that's the difference but you can actually think of us as an extension of kufunda that do mostly cultural stuff great thank you we have a, a, a texted question from Cecily. How many people are living in the village right now? And how many people are living outside of the village, but either working there or being served there? Okay. So we have, uh, I think right now there's about maybe 13 adults and seven children. Um, and then uh, the communities around us, uh, I think they are, like when we have an event, you know, maybe a ceremony, for example, there will be about, I don't know, dinner. How many people were there when you, when you, had, the, when you had the ceremony? I don't know if she's there. Yeah, she's here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh village came and the chief and everybody <laughs> yeah oh my gosh um an easy 60 70 i think yeah maybe they came maybe yeah. yeah and people and people the thing is those are people within the close 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 villages people also come from other places um to to come and learn and 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 uh and um and work with us. Great. Uh, I can take some other, a couple more questions. I want to share this screen that has um, his contact information. Um, and I want to make sure to get it on the recording. Oh, that's my angle. You might enjoy um, his two, 2016 audio slideshow. I put the link for it. See what has, um, how the village has grown and the school has come to be in uh, four years since then. Any more questions? If there are no more, I think we're a little bit over time. People could yeah. go to the Facebook. Yeah. Uh, there I is think a... one more in Birasong. Sounds good. There is a, there's the link, the giving away link uh, in the chat box. So for, for to set up yes. uh, monthly yeah. donations. Right. There's um, a couple. I, yeah. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, I feel very honored. You don't take this, these things for granted when <laughs> people gather to converse with you. Uh, yeah. So I'm very, very grateful. Uh, in, in, uh, in Ubuntu culture, in Chivano culture, appreciation is huge. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's another way that you affirm the other. It's by appreciating. So thank you. Uh, let's do, let's do uh, Kuzanga. I'm playing it on an angle, so it, sometimes it runs out of my hands. <laughs> Manota 
salvo una mambo, mano te manda ni Mano para Dani to, salvo una ishe, mano para Dani Ay ya o, ay era, y era o era ya o Ay ya o ne, ay era y era, y era o era ya o Ay ya o ne, ay era y era, y era o era ya o to see your faces. <laughs> this is the best way to spend my birthday. Thank you. Okay, Lisa, Katenda. Annie, Marilyn, oh, Chris, Angela and Larry, Cicely, Carolyn, oh my God, Erica. Wow, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your days or enjoy your nights wherever you are. <laughs> uh, someone has a question. Uh, well, my question was, do we want to sing happy birthday? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> well, unmute everybody. Every, uh, everybody else is muted. Uh, Oh, Hala is, is... Will we be in sync or not? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, if you're, if you're not muted, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Moyo. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> I guess that was the uh, latency. <laughs> <laughs> Carla! Thank you. Uh, bye. <laughs> Thank you Coffee. so much. Thank you, Moyo. All right. Thank you. Take good care. All right. Stay safe out there. <laughs> <laughs>